guys, Mike Patty with Cine Samples here. And uh, we're here at uh, the Sony scoring stage again. And uh, we're here for Cinebrats Pro. So just like Cinebrass 1, we've got uh, Dennis Sands, who's a part of this one. He's the scoring mixer on Captain America and Real Steel and works with Danny Elfman and, and Alan Silvestri. He did uh, the recording for Back to the Future and pretty much all our favorite film scores. So we're going to have a full group here. We're going to have three trumpets, five trombones actually. Um, one guy playing contrabass trombone, also uh, a tuba player and horns over there. And uh, right now, we're going to actually start our full ensemble section. So how it works is uh, either, either Mike or I will stand up here on this podium, and we've got our giant pile of charts here. Um, we'll just be like, all right, guys, pull out chart number 10. Okay, let's do it at a triple forte, and, and then just run through it. So. We're on chart six. We're gonna attempt to read through this at the quieter dynamic, which is still pretty full. So give me everything you got for A and B, and then we're gonna back off on C. So let's do letter A by itself. And we just play through, and then, and then we go through it again at, at uh, say, double forte. And A, two, three. <laughs> Very nice. It's pretty cool. They actually don't really need a conductor, but it's just cool to stand here because a lot of incredible people have stood in this spot. For this next round of Cinebrest Pro, we talked to some of the players. Actually, some of the players reached out to us who are the most elite, what I'll consider elite players in town and maybe in the world. John Lewis and Rick Baptist, legendary film credits and um, ultimately dependable for anything written in their note. If I were at Sony or Fox or some great room and, and I'm hearing what I hear, what would I have to say to get it to sound like the orchestra I want it to sound like? The nice thing about what you guys have done by using you know, A-class players, all of that, it sounds like they're on the other side of the wall. One of the things that excited me about this library, these sessions were all done in Union. Nobody has ever actually recorded at Sony Pictures a sample library with union players, not just union players, but the top union players. This session had Bruce Fowler, who I think is a great musical genius, Alex Isles, Doug Tornquist, the tuba player, and, and all these guys are the guys who would be the soloists for most everybody's film scores that are recorded here in Los Angeles. They're all over this. They're all over this library. And it's kind of weird to be playing knowing that the samples I'm playing are played by all my friends. These are the guys we use all the time on our scores, and so it's great to have their sound, especially in Sony, another place that we record at, to be able to have this in the library. This, this would pass as your, your second, or your, your... All right, so we can do it on the second. Yeah. The players in Hollywood are specifically trained and used to the idea of playing movie music. I have to say very little about how to get it to be what I want it to be. I think the best thing about it is you get to mock up your, your pieces using that, get the director and the producer accustomed to that sound, and then you can go back to those players when, when I am gonna you know, record, I can go right back and get that sound that the directors already love and already are used to hearing. It sounds as good and similar but just more expressive, and I think that's the real key. As great as samples are, you're still not gonna beat live players. I mean, I think everyone will tell you that, but if you can have a library that comes that close to doing it, I mean, you have the best of both worlds, I think. I just don't think there's any other library that's commercially available that has players of this caliber.